eat all that up. Yes, I can. <laughs> I hope you can't. I've got my eye on one of them bangers. Morning, love. Come on, sit yourself down. I'll just have muesli, thanks. Going to get a decent breakfast in your belly. I'm trying to cut down on saturated fats. Nay, a bit of bacon fat'll do you no harm. That's right. Look at me, thin as a what? Oh, that smells good, Betty. You can have Sarah's or no. While it on. Come on, Robert, eat up, you'll be late for school. Oh, where? Uh, could I look after Babby for you, Sarah? It's all right, thanks. No, I'd like to. I'm trying to keep her to a routine. There you are, Frank. What are you doing? Ah, just nipping out. Auditioning for a Yorkie advert. <coughs> Thought I might as well wear them. You're up to something. Of course I'm not. Searching for your lost youth. I mean, brawling in the wool pack. Now sneaking out dressed like action, man. Well, I'm hardly indispensable around here. Well, you are this morning. We're supposed to be discussing the AGM. We'll do it later. Uh, Frank. See you later. You're not going to do something stupid. Kim, I'm a mature, respectable businessman. Of the rolling stone. Oh, hiya, Mum. I didn't expect to find you all up. Do you fancy a cuppa? No, thanks. Well, you seem ever so much brighter, love. Well, no point moping around all the time, is there? Well, we all deserve the odd mope now and then. Doesn't alter anything. Anyway, I'm going out tonight. Anywhere nice? Mm, the wool pack. Oh, it'll do you good to get out. To be honest, Mum, it's the last place I want to go. You'll be fine. Dave Glover's invited me, so I thought, why not? Dave Glover, eh? Yeah, he's been really nice. Just treating me like a mate and not like some mad woman. I still don't know whether to go or not. You go. On the arm of a handsome young fella. Yeah, he's just good friends. Yeah, of course. I mean it, Mum. I don't want to get involved with anyone. You're bound to feel like that now. Maybe... Maybe I'm no good at relationships, full stop. Of course you are. Choosing the right one now, that's a different matter. And that applies to all of us. Me included. Mum, if you want to be a matchmaker, you get our nick sorted out. I'm working on it. Good luck. <laughs> <sighs> Maybe you should stop here for good, Betty, after serving up breakfast like that. Watch it, Jack. She's lethal with a frying pan. Oh, it's all right for you to joke, Seth Armstrong. I could be on porridge breakfast for the next 12 months. Oh, surely they're not going to press charges. Won't they? It's what they call an easy cop, Jack. All they're interested in is trying to boost the arrest figures. She's right. If you were a bobby, who would you rather call her? Some band of desperados or Betty Eggleton? I'm not sure. Only justice there is these days is natural justice. What do you mean? Note. It won't surprise me if them who kidnap me and Betty get what's coming to them. And, uh, right, I'm off to work. I said I'm off to work. You know, work where people go to earn a living? To pay the electricity so you can sit and watch this rubbish all day. Oh, yeah. Work. I remember now. I used to do that. Got paid for it and all. And then some miserable old git put his spoke in. And that was the end of that. Hang on a minute. Look, I was only trying to do what was best. Look, I'm watching this. I've been thinking. Maybe I was wrong. So it's OK with me if you go and work for the vet. Oh, great. Do you think Zoe will take me back just like that? Could ask her. Oh, tell her more like knowing you. Of course I wouldn't. I can just see you going around there and apologising. Apologise? Oh, forget it. It's school's programmes next. I can't wait. Some fog around as well, but in the north it will be cloudier and temperatures not as low. And then moving on to tomorrow's weather, we'll stop. <sighs> I'm going to have the teachers grouped in disciplines. We have sciences, arts, Social and moral studies. Wouldn't it be better for parents if members of staff could be located alphabetically? And physical education in the annex. I'm sure it would be easier if We shouldn't underestimate our mums and dads, Mrs McAllister. Besides, we'll have our army of volunteers to provide assistance. At least Tina Dingle. That's my point, really. She's positively blooming with the added responsibility I've given her. You shouldn't underestimate our pupils either, Mrs McAllister. I don't... I'll write the name cards up, shall I? No need. Delegate it. Tina uh, and Jane and Michael, please. I've got a little job for you. 
But you can't remember how to drive one of them. There's nothing on the road that I can't drive, Ditch. <laughs> that was before. Before what? Before you got all poncified. <laughs> I've heard you lord of the manor or something now. A young posh piece for a missus. You're jealous. <laughs> Me? Never. I'll be a bit too smooth for her, any road. This feels great. I'll swap me for that. Just make sure you don't strip me down for spare parts while I've gone. <laughs> Rock and roll. You always wear a bad smile underneath, Frank. I'm just going out on my rounds. Problems at Emmerdale? No, no, everything's fine up there. I just wanted a quick word, you know, personal. Oh. I think I might have been a bit out of line. When was that? What about our Linda working for you? Well out of line. Well, I'm a father and there's nothing wrong with looking out for your own. She knows her own mind. Phew, doesn't she just? So, she nagged you into coming up here? The whole family have. I see. It's not just that. I've been thinking about it and I was wrong. Dead wrong. Your personal life's your own business. You've got nothing to do with anybody else. Well, it's a pity you didn't think about that before you started bad-mouthing me. The macho bar talk's bad enough. It's indefensible when it affects my livelihood. I wasn't going to you personally. Well, of course you were. It's what I am. I'm sorry. I've made a right mess of everything. The thing is, I can't think of a better place for our Linda to work. I know you're a damn good vet. She's really grew up while she was working for you with the responsibility on that. She was a great help. I don't suppose there's any chance of you taking her back after this. All right. You will. Ask her to give me a ring. Thanks, Zoe. To tidy up, Butch. Why is a queen for the tea? You're a born idle swine. Take after you. Get in. Thanks. I've got to give it to you, Caroline. He's very handsome, this boy of yours. Give over, will you? I know. And you, Mum. I keep telling him he should get out and meet some nice girls. In Emmerdale? No, if I was ten years younger. <laughs> How many? Cheeky monkey! <laughs> so what do you do with your time, then? What do you mean? You know, I just spend it. Well, if I'm not working, I suppose come in here, you know, have a pint, clear up after Alice, that's about it, really. Well, you must have some hobbies or interests. Pass. How do you describe yourself? What is this, Viv? Miss World? I think I'll put him down as working with animals and helping people. Good thinking. <laughs> I bet you never went short, eh, Alan? What's that, dear? When you were Nick's age, I bet you were fighting the girls off. Oh, I don't know. I bet you still are. Well, I wouldn't say that. Now, the best thing... If my memory serves me right. But what Nick needs is companionship and loyalty. What Nick needs is a good... Viv! He needs to meet a nice, sensible girl. Sensible? Blimey, Caroline. He's a young fella. What did you buy him for Christmas? A pair of slippers and a pipe? No, a cardi and a pair of slippers. <laughs> I thought it was my car. 
<laughs> Where is it? Where's my car? That's my insurance company, and then that's me on the other side. Lucky I've still got this arm. Sorry, but you really should have looked before you opened the car door. Oh, right. I must recite the highway code when I get home. OK, I was a bit close. A bit? Any closer, you'd have ended up in the back seat. Still, no, you're right. I should have looked. Yeah, so should I. I was, uh, I was busy watching that car being towed away. What's that business, anyway, with that guy? Surely cars don't get nicked in this rural idyll, do they? Eric Pollard's house. Did I hear you were right, sir? Afraid so. <laughs> oh, dear. What a shame. Now, now, can I get you a drink? Um, no, thanks. I'm, I'm driving. That's what you call it. Just a mineral water for me, thanks. I'm working. In the village? Right here. I'm here to redesign the wool pack. Ah, oh, yes. Emma Nightingale. You must be Mr Turner. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So I'll be seeing you around, then. Not if I see you first. Zoe Tate. Well, I hope the garage turns up quickly. If there's a problem, just give me a ring. I'm really sorry about all this. So am I. Well, uh, Miss Nightingale. Emma, please. Emma. Now, as I'm sure you can see, there's, there's not much for you to do. Well, I wouldn't say that. You sure you know what you're doing, Frankie? Oh, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> Remind me never to fall out with you. Cuddly hunk, own transport and teeth, seeks mature woman for fun times. Discretion showed. Ooh, let me make a note of the box number. <laughs> it's probably your Vic. No. If it had said seeks mature millionaires, that'd be Vic. <laughs> anyway, come on, my son's future's at stake. What should I put? Let's see. Young man, single parent, We'd like to meet girl 20 to 30 with GSOH. With what? Good sense of humour. You've read these before, haven't you? I live in hope. <laughs> For friendship, pos relationship. Go on, get it written down. Do you think he'll mind? Well, he's not going to do it if you don't. He's a shy lad, really. Well, then that's all the more reason. I mean, at worst, he'll get a few letters through the post. He can always bin them. Yeah, I suppose so. Put photo appreciated. It might just save Miss Perfect from being consigned to the waste bin. Oh, right. This is a feature I'm very proud of. What is it? It's a wishing well. Oh. But I designed it myself. Why? Well, it's a sort of, sort of focal point. It don't work. Many a time I've wished for a free pint, never got a drop. It just brings in good luck, cos some folk would have enough to took the brass in it. It won't work if you don't put money in it, sir. I've put money in it. Oh, Tanner's hating it. I've even tried bottle tops, Western, and a bit of chewing gum. I might have guessed that was you. Mm -hmm. Get my money that easy. Look, I will grant your wish for a free pint. I'm putting no toast if in If you here. will just go away and leave us alone. It's a deal. He's, uh, he's not a typical customer. He's been helpful, actually. He's provided the key. You see, the interior should reflect the character of the people using the wool pack, including, of course, yourself, Alan. Yeah. Yes, yes, I, I, do, I do see what you mean. You're obviously a very bright girl, Emma. So we'll lose the wishing well. Yes, yes, absolutely. I, I mean, I never liked it myself, to be honest. Uh, Frank, we don't serve people wearing overalls in here. Even if I order a bottle of bubbly, we've got something to celebrate. What do you want? Clear off. I heard your jam jar's been half-inched. <laughs> Do you want to clip round here, little smart Alec? Why, Mr Pollard, I only came to tell you it's back of the car. Is it? Polish that good, Mr. Pollard. I hope you're not going to leave it there, old boy. <laughs> to Eric Pollard. And a crushing defeat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Of course, 
as you can watch the end of the programme, Roy. As long as you do the washing up after. Yeah, you should wash up anyway. Hey, you've done not I've been at school all day. Ooh, is it your birthday? Getting a bath in the middle of the week. You sit around on your backside all day thinking them up. I think it's really nice of you to take Cathy out there. Cathy Tate! Ah, she's ancient! <laughs> you Dave, you a toy boy. <laughs> you see, it's all right for you, our Dave. You've got money to throw around. I grab for it. Hey, Dad, why do you go upset the rest of the Tates? Then our Dave will get the sack and all. Oh, don't go on about it, Linda. What's done is done. Things can be undone. Just so happens I've been to see Zoe Tate today. Held me hands up so they were a complete fool I've made of myself. And would you give our Linda a job back? Oh, don't try and be funny. And she said, yes. Shut up, go on. Give her a ring, sort out when. Oh, thanks, Dad. Oh, and I'm really sorry for calling you an old git before. Linda? <laughs> ah, she's right, I am. And a big stupid one at that, I know. Where on earth have you been? Oh, darling. Well? It's just that. I have had the most fantastic day. Well, bully for you, but hasn't it occurred to you that I've been worried sick? You don't tell me where you're going, you switch off your mobile. Sorry. Is that all? There was something I had to do. It's uh, all done and dusted now. An end of the matter. You're not going to tell me, are you? You wouldn't be interested. Frank, you stink of diesel and grease. Mm, great, isn't it? Did you finish the AGM agenda? I'm not saying. Two can play at that game. Right. I'm going to nip off and have a quick shower. Fancy joining me? I know another little game that two can play. I, I hate you, Frank Tate. Mrs. Robinson is please. Yes, yeah, sure. She's over there in that corner. Oh, no. First parents night I've been to this, which is one more than me mum and dad. Yeah, they're a bit of a bore. That's what our butch says. Bit of a bore. Still is as thick as two short planks, though, isn't it? <laughs> it's dead nice, everyone chatting, discussing the plans. You, uh, you all right, Jess? Yes, fine, thanks. Hello, Dr. McAllister. Luke and Jess getting good reports, are they? Uh, yes, splendid. <laughs> It's all going very well. Get the procedures right and the pupils will be right. A well-oiled machine. Oh. And here is the oil for the machine. <laughs> no sugar in yours, Mrs McAllister. Jess said you didn't take it. Oh, thank you. Can I fetch some biscuits? Not now, Tina. She's been upstairs for ages. Oh, I said I'd go for a drink with her if she fancied. Yeah, she said. It's very nice of you. Well, I'm not doing her a favour. No, I know that. Maybe the thought of a crowded pub was too much for her. You know how she's been. Yeah. No. Well, I don't want to push it. Well, I'd better leave it then. Can you tell her I called? Yes, of course I will, love. Oi. Where are you going? She's gone up all right. Yep, she's getting her sleep now so she can keep me and Jack awake later. That's Babby's for you. It was easier when she had her own little room. Seth and me don't want to be a nuisance. Well, Sarah didn't really mean that. You can stay as long as you need. Any road might not be under your feet for much longer. Four to a cell in all the way, I hear. People rattling tin mugs all night and a poe in the corner. What's Holloway? Betty's just joking. Holloway, Robert, it's a jail. Are you going to jail, Betty? Well, it looks that way. Can I come and visit you? I don't think Betty's going to end up in prison over a silly mistake. I bet the copper she nearly brained didn't think it was a silly mistake. Did you brain a copper, Betty? Can we talk about something else? Hey, up. The least haven't lifted you yet, then. I thought they'd lifted you. Where have you been all day? Setting traps. What for? Vermin, Robert, lad. 
Audible rotten vermin. Did you catch any? No, not yet. But I will. Little minx, Tina Dingle, has got the head wrapped round her little finger. You'd think she'd been accepted at Oxbridge. Well, she was certainly very pleasant earlier. You don't know her. No, which is being nice to Jess, which is the most important. She's trying to make me look a fool. Uh, perhaps she's just trying to live down being a dingle. And what's more, the head's falling for it. Ah, well, I'm certain everything will be fine. It'll be fine. He's nice, your dad. Yeah, he's OK. He fancies me. What? He'd love to get his mitts on me. What's about coming in, then? Hmm, I was dreading it. But not now. Especially as there's no Chris, Rachel, or the McAllisters. Oh, forget about other folk. You only have to live with yourself. Listen to you sprouting off your wise old words. <laughs> Learn them off, Seth. You can buy me a pint, then. Oh, where did you spring from? Good to see you, Cathy, love. Good to see you, too, Seth. Wouldn't you be back behind the bar, Cathy? The uh, temporary help is rather unreliable. Cheek! You'll have to put up with me for a while, yeah? She's recuperating. <laughs> well, it's nice to see you here. And well done, young man. I'm glad that chivalry isn't totally dead yet. Oh, give over. You'll not recognise this place soon. Mr Turner's having it tattered up. Refurbished, Seth. That's what I said. I've just been giving designers some of my own personal advice. What? Beer in designer buckets, eh, Seth? <laughs> <laughs> well, may I say how nice it is to see Cathy looking so well? And dare I add, so beautiful. I'll drink to that. Cheers. What did you mean before? What? That your dad's been eyeing me up? Look, cut it out. Where is he, by the way? My point is this. Who fears league tables when you're top of the league? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, Mrs McAllister? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, what are your views? Well, how does one measure performance? <laughs> what criteria should one... You shouldn't do that! You shouldn't touch me there! Excuse me. What's the matter? He did a dirty thing to me, sir, and he said things. Of course I didn't do anything. I'll deal with this. I saw everything. She's on his side, sir. She hates me. You know, you can trust me, Tina. Oh, you can't believe that little hussy. Look, just calm down, Mr McAllister. I want her out of this school now. Well, I think it'd be far better if your husband left. You're taking her side. Look, this is hardly the place. She has made a public accusation. Yes, which we can investigate in due course. Investigate? Can't you see she's a born liar? <laughs> All I can see is yet another situation where the conduct of you and your family threatens the good name of my school. And you better leave, too. This is hardly appropriate behaviour from a deputy head teacher. You sanctimonious hypocrite! <laughs> Come on, Mum. 